That's right, folks. This is Hawk and this is Fanatics and the Fan. And I've got something special for you guys. Uh, I've, I've said for years that I've always wanted to do this and, and make everything official. So here's my official introduction of, of one of my fanatics. Hopefully we'll, we'll get them all on here. But please welcome to the show one of my favorite people in the world, uh, my friend Emily. Hey, girl, how are you? I'm good. I'm living, you know, <laughs> the COVID so, life. <laughs> Right, and this is what we're doing. This is this is kind of a meet the fanatics COVID edition. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see if let, let me see how how on point I am as the host of the show. Emily Trent is a stunt person. Mm -hmm. She is a musical theater nerd. She is a theater nerd. She is a K-pop fanatic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get all of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get eh, most of it. Uh, uh, she kind of is a TV nerd, but very specific. Um, yeah. She she loves stuff from the from the '90s, even though she's not really a '90s kid, but she is. Uh, uh, she, if I'm not mistaken, you 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 you're, you do a little anime stuff, not a lot. I've seen some anime. You've I'm seen not some like anime, a super, but yeah. <laughs> um, but her big one because she's an actress. Uh, she not only is she a uh, all on, she's full on um, movie nerd uh, as well as the TV shows. Um, she aspires to be involved. Um, I was watching uh, uh, Agents of Shield because they're in their last season, and I was thinking, okay. wow, Emily could do better than that on some of those stunts. Not gonna lie, <laughs> <laughs> just just some of the stunts were just. I mean, and they they have crushed it since day one. I'm not sure if you follow uh, follow them, but they've crushed it since day one. And yeah, I I saw the first season, but I don't think. And the second, and I got through some of the third, but I didn't. I stopped after that. So the diehards, I, lo I love diehards. And now I know I didn't get everything. So what are you a diehard of, first of all? What are you a true fanatic about? A fanatic, fanatic. Um, okay. I'm trying to just, obviously Marvel. Um, right. Yeah, that would be the big thing because I've seen all of them. And then, um, let's think. I don't know. Uh what what even exists now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're uh, living the COVID life right now. It's very strange. Right, because um, I wouldn't oh. say I wouldn't say strictly comics or anything, or like or I wouldn't say DC as much as I would say Marvel. I'm thinking right. cinematic universe though. Um, right, right. So let, let's 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 talk about one of the things. I'm going to combine two of your nerddoms together, and let's okay. talk about Marvel's stunts and their and some of their best fight scenes. And we'll we'll still with the we'll stick with the MCU, because if I'm not mistaken, you haven't you're not caught up on any of the television, including the stuff on Netflix. Um, I've watched uh, the first two seasons of Daredevil, and I've seen um, the first season of Jessica Jones. And the best season that, that they had of, of, of any of those shows really was the first right. season of Jessica yeah. Jones. Yeah, and then I saw like some of the first season of Iron Fist, but that was it, yeah. That was more than most of us should have watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so let, let's talk about, let's, let's combine. So you and I have never talked about this, and I talk about this a lot because I'm also a stunt person and professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what, what's your top five favorite uh fight scenes that they've done just the fight scenes at the stunts just the fight scenes because i don't even I don't, I don't even really call it stunts anymore because it's also cgi <laughs> that you can't differentiate between the two at some point right um, um obviously all the fights in winter soldier um ob obviously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that movie you'll understand right um, right <laughs> and then I like I liked the the freaking uh, hallway fight in Daredevil. That was one of the amazing, most amazing things I've ever seen done. Um, as far as continuous shots, you know, as a filmmaker, I've been working. Me and uh, me and uh, my team have been working out on the continuous shot, and I love that one. I love yeah, that one. In, in the class uh, that that I help teach at MSU, we, it's always one of the fights that we show in film is like, cause it's a one shot. Um, it's like just 
one shot of the camera and right. then they just like do the whole thing it's cool okay so that's um, that's thanks, that's though. um yeah that's <laughs> i guess there are multiple fights in winter soldier but i won't use all of them i like a lot of uh black widow fights or i guess her stunt double <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, um, she, so her like stunt the, double and her both killed it because she did a lot of she did some more stuff than we give her credit for, even though she was pregnant um, yeah. in in um, Civil War. Mm -hmm. But she still I mean, every everything she's ever touched has been amazing. I cannot wait for that movie to come out. Yeah, she does some amazing stuff. Um, yeah, if we're talking just stunt stuff. Like, I know there are, like, there are videos of stunt people talking about the stuff in Winter Soldier, and yeah. um, that was super cool um, that they talked. They're like, how did we do this? Well, here you go. So that, the stunts, I don't know. A lot of the fights are so CGI just because it's superheroes and stuff like that, so it's got to right. be a very specific film, um, and it's got to be edited well, but yeah. So well, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and, and you prompted two questions at the same time. Do you spot the stunt doubles as much as the rest of us would? So, like, I knew every time Scarlet's stunt double was on camera because <laughs> she is well, distinctly not Scarlet. Her hair is so not Scarlet's, and even though it's a wig, I can I can spot her every time she's on camera. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's different because I don't really search for the look of it. I always kind of just realize, oh, that's not the actor anymore. They wouldn't have that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then well, sometimes not... you just see that that's not their face. <laughs> 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 but, you know, they hide it pretty well or they like CGI the face. So it just depends. <laughs> well, now Chadwick did a lot of his stuff in Black Panther. He will not be doing a lot of his stuff in Black Panther 2. I promise you of that. But yeah. he did a great deal of his stuff, which is ironic because all his all his fights are masked, except yeah. for there was like what there was like ten seconds in the in the casino that he didn't have his costume on, but the rest of it, and he did right. a great deal of it. Yeah, no, I think I think the biggest thing is like if an actor is capable, it helps. Uh, sorry, my AC is super loud. <laughs> yeah, it's um, all right. But if the if the actor is capable and is athletic, you know. They can do a lot of it, but there's still some things that are too dangerous for actors. And it's like, if you, the actor did get hurt, like that can pause production a, for a while still. So yeah, when actors say they do their own stunts, they they probably do, you know, a, a good amount, but there's they still, they still have a stunt double. Like um, Tom Holland still has a stunt double. He doesn't do all of it. <laughs> but he also does a lot because he's yeah. young enough and can't. Yeah, acrobatic and, you know, and he's a dancer, so he's, like, athletic, so. So there's, like, he's pretty good. But yeah. So now, you clearly are a Marvel person. What's your take on what DC has done, and are you also waiting for the Snyder Cut? <laughs> <laughs> you forget actors and their facial expressions. When you're not acting, they show. You don't, there's no hiding it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean... I don't know, I just feel like, I mean, for Marvel you can say, okay, there's a clear Marvel formula, but the fact of the matter is, is that it works and you enjoy it every time. Um, and with DC, there are a few movies that are pretty good. Um, like obviously Wonder Woman was great and I liked Shazam, I thought it was fun. Um, I actually felt connected to the main character. Isn't that weird um, for DC? Well, I mean, it's but, Zachary uh, Levi, so right, how are you going to yeah. not love Zach? He's, he's one of us. Well, I had... it was like a family-based movie. It was like this just this kid trying to find his place um, and find his family and stuff like that. So it was like, it was more than a superhero film. However, there were still those moments in Wonder Woman and in Shazam that was just an entire CGI fight. And it's like, I wish there was more of a mix of practical effects and CGI because when, when it's all CGI, you can really tell. And when, when it's a mix of practical and CGI, it makes, it makes things a lot more, um, a lot like 
a lot more pleasing to the eye because it's not like a perfect look. It's like, like if you watch, if you watch um, Winter Soldier, you know, obviously there are some things that didn't actually happen, but because they have, um, you know, a mix of practical and CGI, it looked more real than the fight at the end of Wonder Woman or the fight at the end of Shazam. Honestly, the fight at the fight at the end of Wonder Woman and the fight at the end of Shazam don't compare to the stuff that was actually in the middle. Right. The no, no Man's Land was the best fight scene in Wonder Woman, in my opinion. It was the best. That whole sequence was better than most everything else in Wonder Woman. Yeah. Which, which is why I'm not looking forward to 1984 at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean. It depends because I feel like there's a very clear um, vision and people aren't realizing that that vision for um, just the DC universe isn't working. And um, and it's a lot darker and people complain about um, the color of Civil War and how it was just like regular. But they made it in that film, they made it less like a superhero movie and more like we're watching people do good things for other people. And that and that kind of helped make us feel more connected to them. Now, I will say uh, the first Avengers movie, color-wise, was prettier, but um, Civil War was more grounded, and I think that's why we felt more connected. Civil War or, um, or let's say, um, Winter Soldier, because Winter Soldier was better than Civil War, if that makes so, sense. So, yeah, it makes beautiful sense. So here was my take on that. Uh, we love Avengers mainly because it was the first one and it was the beginning of a story and there was a lot of pretty pictures in it. Uh, and, and you and I know from, from filmmakers, there's, when we say pretty pictures, we, we, we get it. We feel each other. We right, vibe. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's art is what it is. Yeah. And then it also became very telling. And, and please pull, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. The formula that they used for Avengers became the formula for all of the movies and it got old for me personally yeah um i think it's true but i also know um if you've ever heard of joseph campbell and his monomyth it's just the theory that the hero's journey is the same throughout all of humanity so it's like it's it's pretty much the same journey except with a little bit of different stuff um, and a different experience and a different character, but we all love that story anyway. So it's like, I can see that um, they use the same formula in, um, in the movies, but I think, and sometimes it's blatantly obvious, you know, and other times it's less obvious because they individualize it more and they make it like more based on character and comic. So like um, Spider-Man Homecoming, was the same kind of formula. It was also the Joseph Campbell formula, you know, that kind of thing. But it was also just one of the better Marvel movies. So it's like, because they focus so much on character. So I think obviously a formula, there's, there's a definite movie formula just in general. And some people um, make it different and they make the movies um, interesting and weird. And sometimes it works and it's amazing, but other times it doesn't. And so they've stuck to a formula that they know works and sometimes it doesn't and it's boring. Um, or sometimes they try too hard to make it different and it ends up not making any sense. Like I'm gonna be honest, Captain Marvel, if they would have, um, the issue was that whenever I was watching it, I didn't feel as connected to her because we were introduced to her as an alien. And so because of that, once we got back, I was like, okay, she's a, she's a person, she feels actual emotions, okay. But they didn't stick to the formula on that one, I would say. And I think that's a, that's a good thing if they can pull it off, you know? Which is why DC doesn't stick to the formula. DC doesn't really have a formula and they don't always pull it off because they're looking for the wrong things. If they have a character driven plot 
and they, you know, and they make us connect, they allow us to connect to their heroes, then, then you can let go of formula, but you have to allow us to connect first. If that makes sense. Well, now that brings me to my next question, and I'm not sure how versed you are in DC's animated stuff versus Marvel's animated stuff. I think it's ironic, and I'll let you talk on this as much as you want, that DC can pull off an animated movie fabulously, mm -hmm. whereas they can't for the life of them do a regular movie, whereas Marvel can do, um, Marvel can do both, but DC is better at the animated stuff than Marvel is. Mm -hmm. um, I actually watched uh, <laughs> Marvel Rising and watched all of it and was watching it uh, with my girlfriend and she just walked in and she goes, honey, this is terrible. Why are we watching this? Mm -hmm. Well, kind of got to get through it because I got to talk about it on the show. So. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, the, the cartoon, like series or animated series, um, those are all, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm less familiar with animated um, content, but I feel like they're probably a lot more episodic with maybe an overarching plot, which is proven to be, you know, a good way of doing it for a lot of series. It's the same for a lot of Doctor Who, even though Doctor Who's kind of going, going downhill, but it's what makes it work. It's because it's a new, new, new monster every week. Um, and, but you're still, you still go towards this one thing. So it's like, there's enough difference, but it's also the same thing with like Star Wars. If you think about how the Star Wars movies are kind of like, oh, come on. But there's such good lore that like, the, that you you play a video game you play a star wars video game and you're like why couldn't this have been a movie you know yes. oh like, yeah a lot of us thought that this lore but they did this instead don't they know how in how good this kind of thing is but they're like doing this instead you know so it's just a matter of the people in charge thinking they know what the audience wants Now, as a creator, do you ever suffer from that complex? Um, I've, I feel like I have, I've come to realize that when it comes to writing or, um, or even editing or whatever, when it comes to writing, don't dumb it down for the audience. Like, if you're writing something, you don't have to say more and more and more just to show that what's happening so that they understand. They'll probably understand. You don't have to say all that. So it's like, don't, don't think the audience is dumb. However, if you're doing something like fight choreography, the audience is dumb. So like, show them what you're doing. It's the, it's the difference between uh, seeing a fight on film and being like, I don't know what's happening. I can't see anything. The camera's shaking all about it. It's like, what is going on? I can't see it. I don't want to, but I can't. So the, the, the fourth episode of Game of Thrones final season, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yes. no, I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's a stylistic choice, um, which I get, but I'm also like, yeah, show what's happening. Um, yeah, you can that was I, I hated that episode. That was so I was so mad. We was actually we we had a viewing party for that one. We were all so mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to turn the brightness up on my TV now. Um, Which yeah, did, so yeah, it was it was it was a lot of the um, the compression of it. It was just it was just awful. They went back and showed it later, by the way. So it was that made it. They made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Now. You're also a fan of a lot of obscure or popular television. Um, you and I have had long discussions about Psych. Um, what else? What else? What else do you jam to? So I I jam to a lot of different things. Um, 
I mean, I, I'm the type that's watched uh, The Vampire Diaries, but also I've watched Criminal Minds. So it's like, um, definitely different styles. Um, but I, I don't know, I used to watch a lot, a lot of TV. I don't as much anymore because of time, but you know, but I also watched, I grew up on Doctor Who and, um, and I watched Community and uh, obviously like The Office, How I Met Your Mother, stuff like that. The funny stuff. And then I, li I watched a lot of drama as well, but yeah, like CW. Though Riverdale is too much for me, I can't do it. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so it was fine the first season, and I was I was done after that. Yeah, um, it was fine. And then I was like, okay, the second season should be good, right? So where are we, where are you on the Arrowverse? Now that Oliver Queen is dead and everything. Well, I mean, I I haven't watched any of the recent stuff. I kind of just. I think, I don't know if I've seen the most recent season of any of them, honestly. I started watching it on the, because Arrow started getting kind of iffy. And then I was like, okay, The Flash is better right now. And then I was like, The Flash is kind of getting iffy. And then I watched Arrow and I was like, oh, this is interesting. They're like incorporating his son and like trying to, you know, figure out how to, uh, make that better and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. They're kind of going back to how it was before and stuff like that. Um, but but I don't I, I never got far enough into it to really know what was happening. <laughs> but yeah. Well, the, the fight scenes, uh, fight choreography that Steven had for most of the seasons with the exception of the last the latest few was amazing. Uh, first mm -hmm. three seasons of his fight choreography was amazing. And even I think even you could appreciate that. Um, the CGI, they never could really afford good CGI. And I'll always say that. I think their CGI is terrible. And you guys can write me on that. It's fanatics in the fan official at gmail.com. I it's still awful. <laughs> like like obviously the big film CGI is gonna be better than the small show, but I don't know. That's why I don't really like CGI as much. Like it's a different art form, but it's like it's definitely it definitely hasn't been perfected yet. There's you know, some really good examples of it, but yeah, I I just don't like it as much as I like practical effects. It's why I don't watch as much animation. Now, were you a, a Winchester fan? Did, did did that get too old for you too fast? It's season six hundred and seventy-five now. <laughs> <laughs> the first 11 seasons so i was a fan <laughs> um but yeah I, I didn't keep watching it after that i don't know it's one of those things where and this kind of happened with psych as well where it's like they have this concept in the beginning and then as it gets bigger and bigger it gets weirder and weirder and then they play more into the wrong things like they play more into um like f funny weird moments more than um legitimate character moments but a great partnership i will give him that for both for both sets of actors in psych as well as supernatural yeah. but let me ask you this question and it's gonna i'm gonna absolutely love this answer what is too much when when do, when do you as a actress we'll, we'll, we'll tap into emily the actress when do you think you're like i right, wait a minute whoa pump the brakes we should probably end like really soon because everybody's falling asleep on set or something like like a series when a series should should end yeah yeah um i think what um i remember seeing that psych was gonna end and they were like we decided we're gonna end while it's still good you know while it's still good so that we don't end and then everyone's like, this show ended up sucking later on, you know? Um, which I think was good. Um, and then they have movies now and they're really weird. But, uh, but I think with Supernatural, I would never want to get to the point where I can't get a job again because I'm one character. Um, and I feel like that's, kind of how it is for the actors on there the it's Seinfeld like, phenomenon or the friends phenomenon 
yeah. or, or the Big well, Bang like, Theory phenomenon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and even in, in Friends, like, um, like Jennifer Aniston got a, got a lot of jobs afterwards, you know, and she's, you know. And Courtney. But she, yeah, but she had a, like, yeah, they have, like, less stylized characters, whereas, you know, um, some of the other characters were very specific. And, you know, um, with with supernatural i just think it it becomes obvious because in the beginning you have this very um specific kind of structure you know and they go and they find monsters and blah 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 blah. but then you're like okay but the big bad next season has to be bigger and then bigger and then bigger and then bigger and then what's good in later seasons is that they play on the fact that oh these people are are like actually like heroes and so other people in in the um in the business is what they call are like oh my god it's the winchesters but but then again it's like it's like i feel like you keep trying to make it bigger but there's a beauty in the small battles or the human battles and i think they've tried it's called supernatural but I think that's all that they have focused on. And I think it would do well for them to focus less on the supernatural because they've opened up this vast world. And it would be stupid to think that they only go after one, after one type of creature only one time in the past 14 years. So it's like, Yes, maybe the monster isn't that good that episode, but maybe it's a learning experience for the character or maybe the character met someone or something like that, that, you know, changed the way they saw something or maybe other characters were brought in. Um, I think Supernatural, just because of the way it's set up, it's just them, right? And then you see other people sometimes and then it's just them, you know? And I think it causes you to lose an opportunity for um, difference in character interactions. Because we've seen the same character interactions with Dean and Sam over the seasons, just about different things. Um, and don't get me wrong, they're interesting and they're compelling, but it's like add someone else in there. I mean, obviously cast, but like. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a buddy of mine uh, well, let me rephrase it. A former friend of mine, a former associate of mine. There we go. A former associate of mine used to say that uh, one of the best things about uh, Batman was not Batman, but it was his villains. Same with the Winchesters. After a while, it's more about Castiel and Crowley and and all of those characters more than it is about Sam and Dean. Right. Well, folks, this has been Meet the Fanatic with Emily, um, one of my one of my favorite fanatics. She's actually, um, nothing better than a fanatic that is solid in their opinions and knows what they're talking about, unlike me. I'm just a fan. I like it all. <laughs> so so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna exit on this. What so what are you most looking forward to uh, in the, in our near future? Because you know we've got a we got a strange future coming up. We don't really know what's gonna happen. What are you the most looking forward to? in the nerd world um i don't know i want to be looking forward to the the marvel stuff i've i've been waiting for falcon and winter soldier for a really long time so i'm really excited about that i hope it's good you know um i don't know i'm i've been getting increasingly uh more busy uh, busier uh <laughs> And so I guess in this upcoming year, it's my it's my senior year of college. So I think I'm just excited to um, be be a nerd on my own and and kind of like figure out life without going to school anymore. <laughs> and, uh, I think I've we're been, all trying to figure out life without Corona. So yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> But As yeah, you can see, I'm, I'm enjoying D &D. my Sandy so Beach. The thing that I'm excited about is just playing more D&D. &D. <laughs> That's the other thing. I knew I forgot something. She's also a D&D &D nerd uh, mm -hmm. who, who plays once a week. 
Um, which, if we can ever pull it off, Fanatics and Fan, of course, will be having a, D and, a weekly D&D game we're going to broadcast. I haven't quite got to tweak a couple more things. I'd rather not do that and have no more Corona, but. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we play over, uh, well, in, in, my, in the first game I played, we played over Roll20 and Discord, and now we play over Google Hangouts, so. <laughs> I like me some Google Hangouts. Mm -hmm. um, folks, this has been Meet the Fanatic with the amazing, wonderful, awesome Emily, uh, and I am Hawk. Uh, be sure to check out our other upcoming events. Be sure to hit like and subscribe down here. Until next time, I am Hawk, and this is Fanatics and the Fan. Mm -hmm.